Sam, welcome again to Hockey Zone. It's your second appearance. It's great to have you back. Thanks for having me. Six months into the role, what impresses you about hockey now and the sport and the way it's run? Yeah, look, a lot of things um, since I've obviously now been in the role a bit longer, but um, for me, you know, there's a huge amount of things, but really the participation base within hockey is one of the more passionate um, and involved participation bases. We might not be the biggest sport out there, but I've been really impressed with grassroots hockey, um, how committed people are, whether it's athletes, coaches, officials, all the people that help bring it together. And ultimately the strength of our sport, I think, will be um, you know, how good our grassroots and participation is. Hockey is one of probably half a dozen sports where it's played on equal terms by uh, both genders, males and females, same rules, same, same everything applies. Did, that, did you realise that coming into the sport? Look, certainly was aware of it, but for me, and it's a really good question, around one of the key strengths that we're certainly positioning the sport around is gender balance. So we're doing a lot of work on our strategic plan at the moment, which is just about finished. And as part of that brand positioning, I honestly think that we are the sport that has gender balance covered uh, at all levels, from, from the elite through to grassroots, uh, through to staffing, coaching, uh, Hockey Australia board is represented. We are a true gender balanced sport and there is very few out there and you know, even with the World Cup coming up both men and women being played at the same time at the same venue um, I, think, I think it is an absolute strength of the sport globally let alone uh, in Australia. How can we uh, promote that? I mean we've just seen uh, a fantastic women's under 18 tournament here, the skills, the athleticism, athleticism on display um, has been absolutely outstanding. It, it, it would be impressive to people outside. How can we promote yeah. this as a sport for men and women, girls and boys? Well, obviously, um, yeah, you guys helping with, with the online stream, I think is something that we've got to continue to look at because the challenge at the moment within sport is it is an incredibly um, cluttered area. Everyone's trying to grab attention for, for all their particular events. So <laughs> as a sport, we need to look at how we can promote the sport and, and certainly market the sport outside of those key marquee events when we do get our opportunities. But we do need to link it back to the fact that, as you know, you've asked uh, previously, uh, men's and women's, boys and girls, it really is played on an equal footing. There is absolutely no area in the sport where it's, it's not equal. Um, and I think that's, you know, as certainly commercially, but even as a, you know, as a participation sport, I think that's gonna be a huge asset for us. So we just need to continue to build on that. Um, uh, we shouldn't assume people know that and we've just got to continue to find ways to get that message out to the, to the broader uh, sports uh, community. We always get a boost in profile around the Olympic Games with the uh, Kookaburras and Hockey Roos. Can we achieve a similar leverage off the Commonwealth Games, which, uh, which are coming up relatively shortly? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the Commonwealth Games, uh, uh, clearly they aren't the Olympics, but they are a really important part uh, for the sport. They affect our funding, so our results are critical. Uh, it is on free-to-air television, so it is one of those rare chances to be promoting our sport with other sports. And one of the things I like is that, you know, I think we compare incredibly favourably to any other sport. So having viewers that might be watching athletics or swimming or any of the other sports uh, tuning in and seeing hockey I think is really important to us. So the Commonwealth Games play a huge part in, in, in that. And the other thing I think that gets lost a little bit is the Commonwealth Games as a tournament um, is, is a very serious and a really difficult tournament to win. You know, you've got a number of the top 10 teams in the world playing. So you know, we're no certainties in either the men's or the women's. We're obviously very confident, but um, it, it's a high quality tournament. So it promotes the sport on all the levels that we, we need it promoted at. We have a uh, few probably hockey players who are household names. Jamie Dwyer is probably one. Rick Charlesworth is another one. He's stepping down as national coach. Is there any chance of uh, continuing his involvement in the game to, to help build that profile? Yeah, so as we, we obviously announced a couple of weeks ago that Rick is definitely finishing off the Commonwealth Games and, and very much his decision. So he, as we said at the time, I think he's one of the greatest coaches this country's ever produced in any sport. So we don't want him lost to the game. Um, it's fair to say he'll want to have a break and his reasons for standing down are you know, to spend more time with his family. Um, don't want to lean on him too quickly, but as far as promoting the sport, absolutely, and engaging uh, to the to the broader audience and and maybe outside of the hockey community. I mean, the name Charlesworth is will stand out and and will help us connect maybe in areas that we haven't before. So he will definitely play a part, but we'll, we'll work through that um, once he's had a really good break and and hopefully delivered a couple of gold medals uh, in the interim as well. 
We've had some uh, high profile sponsors involved in hockey over the years, but where are we at with, uh, with sponsorship dollars at the moment? Yeah, so Fortescue and Ausdrill are our two uh, major partners and obviously Anfa uh, through the Be The Influence sponsorship um, uh, across the board, which is Hockey Roos, Kookaburras and Grassroots. So we have other great sponsors, it's difficult to obviously name them all. Um, but with those three, we're, we're in a good spot, but we have certainly a, um, opportunities, particularly for Australian multinationals that want to get involved and want to sponsor male and female sport. Um, and I think that's what's been really good with the Be, Be The Influence sponsorship. And we are out in the marketplace at the moment trying to attract more partners that do want to look at sport as a true gender equality that we provide, that balance that we provide. Um, but at the end of the day, we're very successful. We have great integrity. So there's a lot of things we're positioning ourselves with. And with the World Cup coming up, there is opportunities. We have, we have space on, on both the team outfits at the moment. We're trying to secure some partners with them. Hopefully getting close with a couple, but um, yeah, it's sponsorship overall is still really tough. It's a very, very tough economic market at the moment. I feel we have the great ingredients to, to promote to commercial partners and the reality is too, um, we are not at the level that some of the bigger codes are at. So there's some great opportunities to get involved for all companies um, and promote their brands and promote um, you know, the opportunities that hockey provide. When you and the board sit down and uh, start planning the future of the hockey, what other elements? Uh, what other elements do you look at? Yeah, so for us, uh, pretty much we'll be announcing our strategic plan for the next five years uh, in the next couple of weeks. So just just uh, crossing the T's and dotting the I's, so to speak, at the moment. Um, the really big things for us, uh, so high performance plays a significant part. Um, we'll never shy away from that, and and the results and the success of the teams and the integrity around the teams is really important. Um, the other two key areas, and you've touched on one already, is commercially. Uh, sport needs to find ways to grow commercially and, and attract more revenue into the sport to tip into high performance. And our other key thing that is an absolute uh, paramount focus for us, which is participation. So high performance and participation are the two key pillars of our sport. They are supported by having strong commercial um, uh, strategic targets. And the fourth pillar, if you like, uh, is governance. So we are a national body, we are governing the whole of sport, um, and we compare really favourably to, to any other sport at the moment from a, from a governance perspective. We think we're a top three governed sport and we need to stay as a top three governed sport. So they're out, you know, we'll have four key targets around high performance, participation, commercial and uh, governance that will drive the direction of the sport moving forward. We have the Absolute Elite program operated out of Perth. We have each state has their own capital city program. Uh, hockey, hockey has drawn a great deal of talent from major regional areas. Is there any chance of spreading that through the, you know, the, the Tamworth, the North Queensland, the yeah. East and Western Australia, Central South Australia, where a lot of talent has come from? Yeah, it's what it would talk. It's probably, I think, your first question around um, uh, being in the role a bit longer now. Things that have uh, I've, I've learnt and um, understood better, and certainly regionally, we we are really strong. It's been. Um, uh, again, a strength of the sport, not just with high performance but um, and, and through the talent pathways, but also in, in promoting some of our key events. We were in Kalgoorlie three weeks ago, and I know North Queensland in, in particular have been uh, quite strong um, and run some really good events as well. So I think uh, Hockey Australia looks at, we have a national footprint and we play from you know, all corners of the country. Um, we need to continually look at how we can expand the sport and the profile of the sport, whether it's through international matches and other opportunities. So regionally I think is a potential advantage for us um, but we'll, we'll, be a, we'll be a sport and, a, and an organisation that focuses on the whole country so it's, um, it's trying to get everything to be honest. You know, We, we want to be city, we want to be regional, we want to be capital cities, we want to be um, everywhere we can and we want to, it's also important to look at potentially new areas, new growth population areas where it's important we look at having facilities in place um, that can support sport and sport and community is such an important link and, and trying to identify the next kookaburras and hockey roos maybe in areas that we haven't in the past but still maintain the strength of, of some of those areas you've talked about.
Cam, I know you're very busy. Thank you very much for sharing a few minutes and your thoughts on Hockey Zone. Very interesting and uh, look forward to next time we get to speak to you. Thanks, Colin. Thanks to the Hockey Zone as well. We really appreciate uh, all the coverage that we do get uh, through you guys and, and, and these national championships um, today and over the last week have been really well run by Hockey Victoria, so I've got to give full credit to them. But appreciate all the support.